Hello, this is Matt from Tracy and Matt.co.uk and from Unboxings.com and here courtesy of our friends over at Clove Technology we have the Sony Ericsson Xperia Pro to look at. Obviously this is an unboxed version, it's slightly pre-retail. Uh, the retail version is going to be uh, available uh, very soon. But we're going to have a quick look at this nonetheless and uh, we'll have a little bit of a demo as well. So let's start at the front here. On the front we have uh, a forward-facing VGA camera, indicator LED on the side here and also there's a I don't think you'll be able to make that out, but ambient light sensor and proximity sensor just uh, between the two there. The display is a 3.7 inch, 854 by 480, or sorry, 480 by 854 pixels. 3.7 inch capacitive touchscreen, it's an LCD display um, rather than AMOLED or Super LCD. Below that we have three physical buttons, uh, which is somewhat unusual in uh, that they are physical rather than capacitive buttons, but uh, we have three, we have back, home and search. Uh, looking down the left hand side we have a 3.5mm headphone jack and the power button. Again a slightly an unusual placement for the power button. Typically find those on top of handsets rather than on the side. And swinging around to the bottom really all we have here is an eyelet for uh, a phone charm or a lanyard. Around to the right hand side we have a dedicated camera button up and down volume control. We also have a cover which I uh, always struggle to open. Here we go, a cover over the uh, HDMI, I think that's uh, mini HDMI or micro HDMI connector. And next to that also is another indicator LED. That one, it works with the top uh, micro USB connector and uh, when you plug in the charger that uh, indicator LED there just uh, does indicate your charge level. The fact that it's charging, um, it's uh, red when you're charging and green when it's fully charged. And uh, if we look on the back here, we have an 8 megapixel autofocus camera with uh, LED flash, and it does record in 720p um, HD, so that's pretty cool. Back is piano black, as you can see there, and uh, many of the Sony Ericsson handsets have sort of this uh, you know, high gloss black, which, um, well, it looks pretty smart when it's clean, but as you can see already, because I'm handling it to actually do the uh, video here, it's already pretty covered in uh, fingerprints so they, that does make it a bit of a fingerprint magnet. Back cover pops off like so and underneath we have the battery just to see if we can see the capacity of that it's a uh, let's say, oh, 1500 milliamp hour um, battery there quite large, quite weighty actually. SIM card goes here and a micro SD card just in the slot underneath there you do have to remove the battery to get to that um, I would typically, I would suggest that uh, when these go on retail sale, it will come with a memory card of you know, some kind. Don't know what size, um, but I would guess between two and eight gig. Um, but the slot will take up to 32 gig SDHC memory cards. Notice that also there's a secondary microphone on the back there, and uh, obviously the back cover just pops over the top of it, which leaves it through that hole. That's uh, just used for noise cancellation. So you have a microphone on the bottom and obviously a microphone on the back, it helps uh, with noise cancellation. Also we have the sliding mechanism. So it's a, uh, you know, we've seen this before countless times on other devices, it's a spring-loaded sliding mechanism which is uh, pretty secure actually. When it's closed it doesn't feel like it's going to just sort of wobble and pop open. Um, so it's pretty, pretty robust and we've got four rows of keys. Um, the letters obviously occupy three rows and in the bottom row with symbols, shift, space and a cursor key arrangement there on the side too. Keys are fairly large and uh, well they are tactile as you can hear there probably uh, so they've got a reasonably good feel to them although all I would say they're just on sort of first impressions uh, it could have been bigger because the keyboard isn't fitting to the edges um, of the of the sort of chassis there so it could have been larger it seems to there's a little bit of a feel of a wasted space there in many ways but uh, anyway that's that nonetheless uh, let's see if we can power up there we go and while we wait for that to turn on I'll run down the rest of the specification uh, quad band for GSM, dual band for HSDPA um, although that's a bit conflicting it might be tri band for HSDPA I've seen different specifications given um, at different times so uh, anyway tri or quad uh, dual or tri-band for HSDPA so roaming is going to work pretty much most places size you've got 120 millimeters uh, from top to bottom 
57 millimeters wide and uh, 13 and a half millimeters thick. It does feel quite weighty, uh, and indeed it's 142 grams. That's uh, I guess that's not particularly heavy considering that we do have the uh, sliding QWERTY keyboard um, and the actual designs with the actual curved edges and uh, the curved back does mean that when it's in the palm of your hand it, it doesn't feel um, terribly heavy uh, it all sort of uh, contributes sort of, uh, to making it feel a bit you know, a bit lighter as already mentioned the display is 3.7 inch 854 by 480 pixels or rather 480 by 854 um, the 854 makes it a little bit wider and uh, it's just a little bit better for you know, web browsing and stuff like that it's pretty cool you've got 1 gig of internal ROM and 512 meg of RAM however um, only 320 meg of that ROM is available to the user. The rest is taken up by the uh, OS and uh, you know, applications that were you know, already pre-installed. 8 megapixel autofocus camera on the rear supports a 720p video recording at 30 frames a second, and uh, because we do have GPS, it supports geotagging and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we've got a built-in FM stereo radio with RDS support and Android OS 2.3 Gingerbread. The processor is a 1 GHz Snapdragon CPU, so we'll do a benchmark on that too to see how efficient that's working. And Wi-Fi 802.11bg and N standards. I think that pretty much covers most of the sort of physical attributes. Let's take a look in here. So already we're looking like having a fairly typical Sony Ericsson user interface, the uh, Timescape style user interface there we go yep so we have timescape here at the front um, we have Google search with voice search uh, a couple of things underneath that I don't immediately recognize oh, so one of them is uh, services for uh, basically uh, social media you've got your timescape button in the middle and a refresh button that's basically all part of that widget there I think underneath that you have media messaging the Launcher, which we'll come back out of. Contacts and phone, phone dialer. We'll just take a quick look at it again. It's uh, pretty straightforward. Seen this quite a few times on Sony Ericsson handsets. So you've got your call log, contacts, favourites, and phone. Back to home. We have another panel here. So you've got your media. Uh, we've got uh, a camera and uh, that'll be photos there. So if we had a memory card and there were photos on it, it's kind of a little slideshow that sits in the middle. And you've got uh, this. Uh, oh, it basically looks like paid. Yeah, that's so video unlimited paid, um, paid videos, uh, downloads, and um, rental. And you have uh, Moxia email. So you've got business and security settings there. So Moxia mail account can be set up through here. And if we come back the other way, we have search, we have the weather and Android market. You have the controls here for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, the uh, sound levels, volume levels, so you can actually set it into vibrate or uh, loudspeaker. The backlight brightness controls, sync, and uh, I think that's GPS controls there, and in the tips section. So we're going to go ahead and turn on Wi-Fi, uh, but we'll probably have to go into settings menu to actually get that up and running so Wi-Fi is on connect to a wireless network you see we've got a straightforward keyboard there in the screen closed portrait orientation and we do have an on-screen keyboard should we choose to use it in portrait pretty large so there we go we are now connected so let's pop in and have a look at a couple of things in the application list so we've got uh, four pages worth of applications here this looks pretty straightforward nothing terribly unusual we've got the music unlimited I think is the only thing that isn't particularly standard and it's going across here you got our oh, music unlimited and video limited um, data monitor are extremely useful for those that are on uh, limited uh, sort of capped data contracts with a mobile network again most of that is pretty straightforward We've got a 3D camera, we've only got one camera on the back, so I don't know what that's, uh, that's for. And uh, so it looks like we can. Uh, oh, okay. So by panning the camera from left to right, 
Um, it basically simulates taking 3D photos, that's quite cool. We'll uh, look at that properly when we do our review. Um, Xperia Hot Shots, we've got Let's Golf, 3D photo album, uh, Neo Readem Cafe Security, uh, Liveware, we've got some apps and games, and Moxia Pro, which is obviously for mail. Friends, games and applications, that requires us to log into Facebook, which we'll avoid for just a moment. So take a look at the browser. There we go. Complain about not having a SIM card, but never mind. Let's go to our site. Okay, it's loading very fast. Uh, again, uh, I mentioned this on all of our videos, but just to be clear, we are using a uh, broadband connection and Wi-Fi rather than using a SIM card. But since it is indicative of um, the rendering speed of the browser, so that's pretty cool. I have to say that the uh, screen being um, LCD, uh, I think uh, some people sort of think that LCD is the poorer or sort of um, baby brother or whatever you want to call it for uh, Super LCD and um, AMOLED and I guess that's true to some degree but Sony Ericsson do seem to really push the boundaries of the LCD the colours on here are really strong um, especially where you've got some shading and gradation the blues and the greens I'm sure that's not really going to come out terribly well um, in the video recording that we're doing here but um, believe me it's a, there is a degree of brightness around these colours but it's pretty cool. So um, I know that uh, when you're watching video um, on here, it does have the um, Sony Mobile Bravia engine for actual video uh, playback um, to actually improve the quality of video playback. But uh, I've definitely done something with the LCD to, to make it nice and bright and vivid. Uh, in that arrangement, we can still see the text. It's rendered OK, although albeit very tiny. And clearly, we can do the uh, landscape orientation as well. And like that, because we've got that 854 pixels, it's only a little more than, you know, 54 more than, you know, a typical 800 by 480. But it uh, works really rather well. Two finger zooming, double tap to zoom into a, a section, double tap to zoom out. And uh, yeah, work, works really, really quite well. Back into here. Uh, let's take a quick look at YouTube. Do a quick search for my alias, which is Leo D, um, and let's go ahead and just experience, experience Neo. Right, that played rather quickly, buffered and played quite quickly. Again, put it into the uh, landscape orientation and the portrait orientation. You'll notice actually that when the video isn't playing, it's not actually switching the video around. That's just okay, I guess that's just, just a quirk of the uh, video engine on this. But anyway, uh, it's a standard YouTube implementation. It buffered and played very quickly, um, works quite good. And the YouTube client on uh, Android is pretty decent anyway. And we will just pop into the market and sign in. Very quickly, getting okay, signed into Android Market. We accept terms and conditions, etc. And there we go. So you got your apps. It is a typical. It's nothing unusual about uh, this implementation of Android Market, frankly. So you got your apps, you got your games, and then you've got Sony Ericsson. I'm sure the Sony Ericsson recommendations and a bit of branding at the top there. Um, but you know, a lot of this stuff, like Music Unlimited, that's already installed. Um, you know, these are all recommendations from Sony Ericsson. And in terms of what's downloading, it's found some updates. So it's found quite a few updates, in fact. So uh, that's going to come down at some point. What I'm going to do, though, is search search for. Quadrant, and we'll download Quadrant Standard, which we'll install. And at the top, we've got Notification section. Let's 
installing quadrant. So we go ahead and open that now and we'll run that very quickly to do a quick benchmark and just see what the results are like. So we run CPU tests, memory tests, um, read write of file system and so on here. Seems to be fairly quick so far. And we'll have a 2D graphics running at uh, yeah, nine, between 9 and 10 frames a second there. And 3D at uh, well, around 20 frames a second averaging, I guess. Around 60 frames a second there. Seems reasonably quick. And uh, just over 30 frames a second there as well. There we go, so let's just get our benchmark results. And it's 1352, not bad um, for just a single core 1 gigahertz CPU, I guess. Um, it's comparable, let's just put it just above the Nexus one with uh, Android 2.2. But um, you know, it's not a roaring CPU, but it's uh, not shamed itself either, so that's not too bad. We'll do, you know, when we do the full review anyway, we'll run that around about sort of 10 times to take an average um, when we do a full review. But anyway, that is a quick uh, look and demo of the Sony Ericsson Xperia Pro. We'll have a full review for you over the next couple of weeks. In the meantime, if you want to follow us on Twitter, it's twitter.com slash tracyandmatt or facebook.com slash tracyandmatt.co.uk. Uh, please do feel free to ask us questions about this, any other handsets, and indeed anything that you want us to sort of come back to you on and, and do reviews of in future and that kind of stuff. Um, follow us and just uh, yeah, get in touch. Uh, I'll be back soon with some more videos and reviews on tracyandmat.co.uk, but for now, thanks for watching.